What is up, Patreons? I hope that you all had a great weekend, and today is Tuesday, September 26th, and uh, I went fishing yesterday. So this is going to be a fishing report slash fishing forecast for this up and coming week. Now, before we get started on the fishing report, one of the things that um, that we're experiencing right here in the um, upper Texas coast is uh, we're experiencing some red tide. And typically, you know, I don't follow a lot of what people post on social media. You know, I just kind of go out and experience it for myself. And if I... Um, if I experience some of the stuff that's going on, then, you know, I might add it to a video or I might do a video on it uh, based on my own personal experience. Now, yesterday we went fishing at Texas City Dyke. My son had uh, no school. It was a teacher. It was an in-service day and he didn't have any school. And his friend didn't have school either. And a good buddy of his that... Um, has been playing football with them for years and years uh didn't have school either and he's been wanting to go fishing and fishes our neighborhood ponds uh probably like two days a week so really great kid loves to fish i just hadn't our schedules haven't uh go together gone together and the weather hasn't cooperated for us to all go fishing together so i wanted to take him out and i want to do a little weight fishing and texas city dyke is always a very easy place to walk in and weight fish well, kind of based on the wind and the weather, but yesterday we had a little bit of a south breeze, so I knew going like where Mosquito Island is and just walk in and stay cool, get some live shrimp uh, underneath some corks, and just go out there and just catch whatever. Hopefully catch some speckled trout, um, but there's always some kind of fish out there, whether it's ladyfish or uh, sheep, or not sheephead, but um, sand trout or uh, whitings. Broker, there's always something out there uh, to be caught uh, that's not, um, maybe not really the desirable fish that we're looking for, but definitely fun for the kids. And you know what? I like it. I enjoy catching fish too. So I went out there with the mindset that uh, the boys are going to be fishing and I'm going to be the bait guy and the net guy. And I'm just going to record them having fun. And, and, you know, all kids love being on YouTube. So. I plan on making a video with that, and we didn't catch one single speck, but I do plan on making a video with that just, just for fun for the boys. Um, but one of the things that I did notice was a little bit of a red tide uh, that is going on. Well, actually, a lot of red tides going on. Um, I'll show you here on the map kind of where we fished and uh, kind of give you that, that info. Um, let's take a look right here. Now, here is Texas City Dyke. In case you never fish here, all right. There's not really much of an address. Um, I thought it would get some kind of address, but you probably just punch in Texas City Dyke in your maps and you can head off to it. Uh, we did stop and pick them some bait at Boyd's. Boyd's has some, uh, you can probably punch this address in. Boyd's had some really nice bait. Uh, very decent size right now of shrimp that's coming in a little on the big side. Uh, so we just ripped a lot of that stuff, kind of just ripped it in pieces and ripped it in half, uh, especially when we weren't really getting into it anything um a big consequence or big a uh, big predator fish but if you come right here there is a island or really more of a, like a peninsula but it's it's called an island it's a mosquito island and typically if you come out here and we'll just start casting and you walk off the island a little bit it gets about maybe about close to waist deep but yesterday, you know, we are closer. We close to a, we're close to a full moon this week. So yesterday, you couldn't even see the island. It was totally submerged in the water, and most of the time you can see it, but it was totally submerged in the water because we kind of have a high uh, high tide right now. So keep that in mind if you are looking at going out. The tides reasonably kind of high, and uh, we just walked out here. We fished a little bit right in here. We as soon as we walked in, we saw schools of uh, bait that was. Um, getting blown up on and disturbed and like literally like first or second cast ladyfish uh we walked a little further and a lot of times i like to walk all the way to the edge and kind of fish here typically i'll come in here and cast a little bit like towards the middle and then i'll just kind of it's it's a nice little spot because you can just kind of just walk i'll walk down walk down over here on on this side is a little bit of rocky 
So um, after typically if I go take shrimp, I'll go over here and I'll fish this whole side over here. Um, and then I'll walk out to this edge and fish a little bit. Uh, and then a lot of times I'll switch up and put gope on and they kind of, this is a little more soft and mud. So I'll start fishing around here for, uh, for flounder. And um, I've caught some decent flounder over here. I wouldn't say it's really like a flounder spot or a flounder hole, but but it can hold some flounder. Um, it's very easy place to fish. I like bringing people who run inexperienced or maybe even like my son and his friends. I like bringing them to this spot because with a little south south wind, um, this side is typically much calmer. And like I said, you have a shell bar. And if the kids are a little too spooky and don't want to be weight fishing in the water, then they know they can back up and even fish from the shell bar if they desire to. Um, I would recommend a nice sole shoe because this is shell. Uh, if you have your old pair of tennis shoes, um, it's always a great idea to fish wearing pants in this area. There's always a bunch of little jellyfish. We didn't see a whole lot of jellyfish. Um, but the water was was sandy. It was a little sandy. It wasn't as clean as I would have liked it have been. And that's probably uh, the reason my last couple trips have been here. I've been here. It's been a little dirty there. So I think that's kind of like why the, the specs might have pushed off. And you have to be careful because there's some. There's a few deep holes out here. Um, and also when you get the barges that run through the channel, they will throw a little bit of a weird wake. So kind of just be aware that you know the cooling of the tide and the pushing of the wake when the barges go in and out um we experienced that but it wasn't bad at all uh the highlight of the trip as far as fish caught a uh, ton of ladyfish out there i mean they would even hit just on your hook um uh, the boys had a lot of fun ladyfish croaker big whiting and uh, um my son's friend he caught his first jack so that was that was pretty cool for him. Uh, I came back, we came back out, and then we flew the drone a little bit. Uh, and then the boys wanted to go back in again because they weren't done fishing. We already went through our bait. We put up some, some spoons underneath the cork to kind of help keep the boys out of all the shell and stuff that are, you know, I didn't want them to continue to get hung up. So uh, we did, we left the uh, the corks on and just cut the little hook off and put a, um, a spoon on there, a little cast master spoon, and the boys caught a few ladyfish. Uh, we came across here. I saw a lot. Well, actually, we started driving down, and we just drove just past these boats, uh, the shrimp boats, and I saw a bunch of seagulls flying around, and uh, I wanted to investigate, so I pulled over, and I wanted to throw the spoon a little bit, but as soon as I pulled over, I just seen the red tide. There was just red tide everywhere, and uh, well, here's a, here's a video clip from that. Uh, from yesterday all right so one of the things that is going on right now is called the red tide and mm -hmm. what that does is that takes the oxygen out of the water and uh it causes the fish to die now typically it's kind of common for this time of the year but we've had it pretty bad here with the lack of rain and uh and i know a lot of people have been posting a lot of stuff you see it all over from uh all over the coast and that's kind of the reason why we're fishing on that side of the of the texas city but you can see right here this is a huge you can just see look at my hand compared to him i mean it is just a huge alligator gar and you can see how red this the water is from the red tide i mean even a little rockfish over here is dead but you'll see you'll have these fish all up and down the coast and uh i'm not too sure if it's safe to, to save consumption during the red tide but you can see this guy is just a big old guy he's big and bloated but you can see from his jaw size his jaw itself is probably about maybe about a foot long but there's a ton of birds out here that are diving and diving and just eating some of the the shad that come and, and float up to the to the water surface they're just gorging gorging out here on the shad i bet uh, i'm not seeing any shad but i know they're i know they're here so it sucks it's tough for our fishery but you know this is just it's part of nature so that was just a short clip uh, from uh, yesterday and uh one of the things that reason why i bring it up is because one of the things that red tide can do now we haven't had red tide like this since like 2018 uh i remember it just a little bit not not too much but um 
it can irritate your 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 nose, your throat, your eyes, people with asthma. It can affect them more severely. And one of the things that uh, even from that me being out there and just like 10 minutes, maybe if that um, and possibly even yesterday or even fishing on the other side, my throat is bothering me a lot. My throat is bothering me a lot. It feels like the back of my nasal cavity is swollen in my throat area and it, it's irritating it doesn't hurt but it is irritating so keep that in mind if you are uh, like me and you do have allergy issues and you have sensitive sinuses uh, just keep that in mind if you are planning on going out and fishing uh, during this red tide just keep that in mind and uh, also you know, I, I've done a little bit of research. I was looking because I really didn't know what red tide was. I heard it. I knew it was some kind of algae, and I knew that it would offer, you know, do fish kill and stuff like that. But it's really, it's a bad toxin, and uh, you don't want to be consuming any fish uh, that are affected by the red tide. Or I wouldn't even consume any fish that are in the same body of water. And, uh, you know, just give it a quick time out, catch and release, practice catch and release only. But anyway, so we we went we took a drive we took a drive we drove all the way down to the edge of the dike down here, and uh, on these rocks on the very tip, uh, especially this corner over here. If you can get there uh, pre sunrise, you typically can do pretty good. Like uh, specks under either free lining or uh, cork with a long leader, you can typically do pretty good with some specks over here. Uh, we did see a boat that was kind of post up. There was a few guys out here. But we pulled up right in here and just kind of watched this guy. He caught probably like about 15-inch uh, speckled trout. And then uh, several feet over over in this area, another guy pulled out uh, another speckled trout. So if you're looking for trout, I, I would think that they're kind of in this area on this tip. Uh, the water looked much better, much cleaner. You know, this water is uh, is uh, has decent current and kind of fast-moving Um with the winds being pushed up, everything was kind of pushed up in here as far as like dead fish go and the tide, red tide goes. Uh, this whole area, I didn't see any kind of red tide issues whatsoever. But uh, I just think that, you know, the red tide is kind of moved this way because we had this southeast wind. So as the wind shifts, I'm assuming that the tide's going to get pushed uh, with different direction. But right now, it seems like this area right here is pretty clean, clear for um, having any red tide issues or making it a, that you can see it with your eye. Uh, a lot of times, uh, they there will be like dead shadow on the surface, but there will also be like just schools of dead shad underneath the surface. They can be, you know, five, ten feet down from the surface area. And a lot of the fish will just gorge and the reds and the sharks and all of that will just gorge and gorge and gorge on these uh, dead fish, uh, making them hard to catch. But my my more concern would be uh, making them bad for consumption. So anyway, that's uh, yesterday's fish report. Let's talk about this week's fishing forecast uh, going forward. All right, so I selected Galveston. We're going to look at the, the weather, 10-day uh, forecast, and uh, yeah, all upper 80s, you know, in the high 70s is is um, the low. We do have a little bit of spotty rain, uh, which kind of helps everybody. Hopefully, that kind of helps the red tide, too, you know, introducing the oxygen into the water, kind of help fight this natural occurrence. Um the wind is in the teens. We do have um kind of going up northeast, northeast. Uh, this morning it was out of the north. It says east northeast, but um kind of going out of the north a little bit. So what's your flash flatten the surf out some um going into the weekend? We do have a full moon that is gonna start. We're gonna start seeing the effects probably Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, kind of the new moon going on. So that's always gonna affect the bite, especially after sunrise around nine to ten. When you do have a full moon, you know, fish are going to feed overnight. And, of course, with this red tide, I've seen a lot of fish kill. I mean, uh, off its bayou has had a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of shad that is all all, all uh, washed up um, on the shoreline there. And, uh, you know, all around Surfside, Guantana, uh, Matagorda, a lot of fish kill there. And a lot of fish kill, like, even more inlet. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, it might be a struggle with this red tide as far as trying to catch some fish. But um, if you have the opportunity to go out, go out. Just do keep in mind if you are sensitive, you know, to, to the uh, irritation, you know, maybe keep your buff on or, or break out those COVID masks. I know those, those 
hey Kobe mask. But anyway, um, uh, possibly some rain, some decent amount of wind in the teens. Not too bad. Remember that's just su su sustain. Uh, that's not the gust. And uh, looking at Windfinder, and I selected Seawall Galveston because that's normally like the windiest part uh, that um, in the area here. Uh, today's winds, yeah, kind of a north uh, north winds. Again, there's a flatten the surf out tomorrow morning. Kind of seeing the same kind of trend, but it's not showing the teens here. It does kick up uh, Thursday afternoon going into Friday, and even Friday night, look at that. Look at that gust, about 23 miles an hour. And then Saturday and Sunday, looks like it's going to be a little windy this weekend. Um, going into the 1st of October. So just keep that in mind if you are looking at going out and you don't know whether you want to go out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday looks like the better wind day this far out. Uh, again, remember, it's a kind of a full moon effect. And then uh, Sunday is kind of calms down just a little bit. But it's, you know, and Saturday looks like it's going to be the windiest day. So just keep your eye on that in case you are going out. Plan accordingly. Um, if you're in the kayak, you definitely want to keep an eye out and make sure that you don't get caught in any of that crazy wind. Um, let's check out tides for fishing. I, I have selected Jamaica West Bay, uh, the bay side of Jamaica Beach. And let's click off this stuff. All right. So we're going to experience right here. So we're getting closer to the full moon area. So you have four tide changes, which is which is good. Uh, keep in mind, uh, sunrise is at 710, so keep in mind, you do have a high tide, so you have an incoming tide, so if you get out there, I guess like around 630, uh, 615, the sun starts coming up just a little bit, or the sky and the light, uh, this, the, the light in the sky starts shining just a little bit where you won't necessarily need your headlamp, so uh, just keep that in mind to get out there a little pre-sunrise so you can really capitalize on that sunrise bite especially around a full moon because it would dog out a lot of times now based on the tide change the tide level uh we do have a low tide around 12 40 tomorrow and that's going to trigger a tight uh, uh that's going to trigger a a healthy bite forecast right there so uh if you do go out you you'll get some of that uh sunrise bite and then you have that tide change bite around 12 12 40 so keep that in mind if you are going out and you should probably see that trend going forward. Um, but yeah, do keep that in mind if you are going out and you can't catch, if you can't uh, get on the fish, just keep pushing yourself when that tide changes over. You should really see that. And Thursday echoes just that. You got four tide changes, constant water movement, nice incoming tide right here yeah, in the afternoon. And uh, some people do. Some A lot of people like to fish more afternoons during the full moon and even go into the evening just a little bit. Because you do have those fish that are going to feed uh, what the uh, if the if we don't have a overcast, you do have those fish that are going to feed throughout the night. Um, a nice big healthy bite midday. Let's check out Friday. Winds. Remember the winds are going to start kicking up just a little bit. Uh, so do um, do plan accordingly. A uh, nice four tide change. Look at this tide though. I love this incoming tide. This is a strong healthy incoming tide. You have a strong healthy bite. That's sunrise. So Friday morning, sunrise, incoming tide, sunrise, high tide, those three things all mix and meet at the right point. And if you're out there or in your target area that you want to be fishing, uh, get out there early so you can be in the spot you want to hit uh, before sunrise. And then you're going you're gonna to get on them. You definitely get on them. If you can push yourself to 2 o'clock when that tide switches around and goes from outgoing to incoming, you should also see a very, very healthy bite. Saturday, little windy day. Um, again, four tide changes. Nice, healthy incoming tide right here. You're gonna have a nice bite forecast as soon as that sun starts coming up, uh, and as this tide changes come around, nice healthy bite forecast around three o'clock. It's gonna switch, and another big nice healthy bite. And then again, uh, just a little after sunset, or right at sunset, you should see a uh, a healthy bite scenario. So let's take a look at Sunday. Sunday, same kind of deal. Four tide changes. Trust me, you're gonna that bite's gonna be there at sunrise, and you're gonna get a nice big healthy bite at 3:30. Let's peek into Monday, October 2nd. Uh, you're gonna start seeing it kind of die off a little bit. Yep, and there we go right there. A little bit of slack tide, not a whole lot going on in the morning. But if you are gonna go fish Monday, uh, you 
I would definitely be out there at sunrise and try to capitalize on that slow bite. You know, sometimes you can find the fish stacked up. And Tuesday looks tough. You know, you have uh, not a very strong outgoing tide, but a constant outgoing tide and tide change all day long. So, yes, you do want water movement. Yes, you do want that that tide change. But um, unfortunately, the tide's not going to change like very consistent. It's just going to slowly fall out. So Tuesday might be a bit of a dog day. And uh, it's going to pick up a little bit on Wednesday. Nice big healthy bite right at sunrise and uh, another healthy bite at sunset. So keep that in mind. And let's check out the surf. And right here, let's see that uh, wind's supposed to kick up, and the surf going forward is going to be pretty dirty, or pretty dirty and pretty high. Uh, great if you're looking at getting out the 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 boogie boards or taking the kids out there to go play in the waves. But keep in mind, we do have that red tide going on uh, today. There's not much of a um, not much of a surf, and tomorrow and Thursday, not much of a surf either. So taking a look at saltwater recon, current beach conditions for Galveston is yellow. Uh, so it's caution. It means you got a little bit of wave activity going on this morning. But uh, yesterday, it looked the 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 surf still looked decent. It didn't look bad at all. Um, you can see right here, it's still going to be fairly good conditions as far as water clarity goes. Um, I'm not too sure what the fish report has has been over the last couple of days, but. Um, I know people are still catching some specks, uh, you know, and it kind of seems like the, the speckled trout are starting to, you know, this time of year they start coming in just a little bit. So more uh, speck action happening like uh, on the jetties, um, whether it's south jetty or uh, north jetty, if you're in a boat or if you go out there and walk on some of the rocks. I know a gentleman that went out there and walked out there on Thursday and uh, he was just free lining some, uh, some shrimp and uh, fishing with the... Uh, with some shrimp and some mullet that he caught in his cast net and then he just tore up the specks out there so do keep that in mind there you do have an access point um through eat speech over there and if you want to take the ferry across um in galveston you do have on the bolivar side you do have the north jetty over there as well that you can walk onto and uh, of course there's always surf side jetty but i think the majority of the concentration of the red tide is down more towards the surf side area uh, as far as the beach goes, uh, more concentrated down there than they are than there than it is in uh, the Galveston area. But I don't know that for certain. I haven't been down there to uh, to see firsthand. But um, I haven't had any reports come in that there is any you know dead fish washing up in the Galveston beaches. But hey, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for being a Patreon. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. And, uh, yeah, my throat is bothering me pretty bad, so I'm going to stop talking. And uh, I'm going to get to editing a couple of videos. I have a couple of videos I need to edit and get out to you guys. I do have some bonus footage uh, from my last video, so keep a lookout for that. Um, I'll post as soon as I get done with this. Um, I'll make that uh, live for you guys to watch and enjoy. But thank you again. If you have any questions, you don't hesitate to ask. That is what I'm here for. Uh, thanks again. Have a good one.